So in this video, we are going to be looking at the effect of osmosis on plant cells. Just like the previous video, I am going to assume that the water potential in the plant cell cytoplasm is negative 300 kilopascal. But as a reminder, I do not want you to memorize this, by the way, because that's not important. What will happen to the plant cell if we were to immerse it in distilled water, dilute salt solution, or a concentrated salt solution? Will it have the same effect uh, as animal cells, as we saw in the previous video? Well, let's look at the first one. So, in this case, if I were to put the plant cell in distilled water of a water potential of 0 kilopascals, well, the first thing that will happen is compare, the cytoplasm has a water potential of negative 300 kilopascal and the distal water has a water potential of 0 kilopascals. So the plant cell cytoplasm has a more negative or lower water potential and the distal water has a less negative or higher water potential. Therefore, what will happen? Osmosis will occur in this case where there will be a net movement of water into the plant cells because that's what osmosis is all about. Now, if this were an animal cell, the animal cell may have burst due to the sudden influx of water and the increase in pressure within the cell. But will that happen with the plant cell? The answer is no, the plant cell will not burst. In fact, the plant cell size will not actually significantly increase. There will be a slight outward swelling of the cell, as you can see there. The shape slightly changes where it's trying to like swell outwards, but there will be no significant change in the size of the cell. Other changes that you can also see is the size of the vacuole is very big. Okay, the, the vacuole size enlarges as well. But the weird thing is, the cytoplasm, yes, there is an increase in volume. It's pushing against the cell surface membrane, as I've represented in the arrow, and the cell surface membrane is pushing against the cell wall. But if you remember a bit of revision in chapter 2, the plant cell wall is made out of linear cellulose molecules, and many of the cellulose molecules form hydrogen bonds. And because of these hydrogen bonds, they form something called cellulose microfibril, and many cellulose microfibril form the cellulose fiber. Thus, the cellulose cell wall of the plants have a high tensile strength, meaning to say, even if you were to try to push through the fiber, it will not easily break. And the same thing is happening here. The cell surface membrane is pushing against the cell wall, which is very rigid and strong. Therefore, the cell will not burst because it's able to withstand the extremely high pressure within the plant cell. And we will say that the plant cell is turgid, where the internal pressure of the cell is extremely high. If any questions in the exam ask you, how is the cell wall able to prevent the plant cells from bursting due to high osmotic pressure, you can just say that the cell wall is made up of many cellulose chains linked together by hydrogen bonds to form microfibril. Many microfibril forms the cellulose fiber, which in turn makes the cellulose cell wall have a high tensile strength, which means to say it can withstand very high pressure without breaking. That's what we have to say. But the weird thing is, I do want to cover a bit of extra bit of information. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out an animal cell at the top and a plant cell at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to immerse both cells in distilled water. Now, here's where it becomes quite interesting. You see, when you put both cells in distilled water, well, obviously, water will rush into the cell. I'm representing the water as those blue color dots. Now, in the second diagram, you can see in the animal cell, one arrow just signifies that a bit of water enters the animal cell by osmosis. It just represents the amount of water going into the animal cell. And when water goes into the animal cell, obviously the water potential of the cell increases because it's trying to be equal with the external solution. You don't have to memorize this part, but you just have to understand that 
when water goes into the cell, the cell's water potential will increase because it's becoming more dilute. In this case, when a little bit of water goes into the cell, from negative 300, it becomes negative 280 kilopascals. So that's fine. But the weird thing is, when the same amount of water enters the plant cell, instead of becoming negative 280 kilopascals, it becomes negative 150 kilopascals. That's weird, isn't it? Because you might be thinking, wait, the same amount of water entered in the animal cell and it also entered in the plant cell. Yet, why does the plant cell have a significant increase in its water potential? In the next diagram, as you can see here, extra water goes into the cell and the cell bursts before reaching equilibrium. That's what causes the cells to burst. But in the plant cells, very little water entered the plant cells, as I've signified in two arrows, and the water potential inside the plant cell and outside the plant cell is now equal. Very little water had to go in for the plant cell and the distilled water to reach equilibrium. The weird thing over here is, how is that even possible? The answer here is, if you remember, water potential is affected by two things solute concentration and the pressure on the solution as well. And I told you that the more pressure the solution has, the water potential increases. So the interesting thing here is when water enters the cell, yes, the cytoplasm is trying to push outwards against the rigid cell wall, but they have no room to expand because the cell wall does not bend easily. Thus, even though the volume of cytoplasm increased, there is no space to expand into, causing the pressure within the cell to significantly increase. And when the pressure in the cell significantly increases, it causes the water potential within the cell to also exponentially increase to, for example, zero kilopascals. So long story short, the reason why very little water had to go into reach equilibrium was because the pressure within the cell increased significantly, causing the water potential within the cell to go from negative 300 kilopascals to zero kilopascals very quickly. That's basically it. I'm going to ignore the dis dilute salt solution because if you were to put the plant cells in a dilute salt solution, there will be no changes to the plant cell because osmosis does not happen because in this case, the water potential in and out of the cell is equal, so there's nothing much for us to say. Our next focus is if you were to put the plant cell in a concentrated salt solution, and if you were to do so, what will happen is the water potential in the cell is negative 300 kilopascals, outside is negative 700 kilopascals, so the cell has a less negative or higher water potential, and the solution outside the cell has a more negative or lower water potential. So the water rushes out of the cell by osmosis. In this case, the cell wall, which is a rigid structure, does not shrink. But as you can see, the internal structure of the plant shrinks. So the volume of the cytoplasm decreases and the cell surface membrane has now separated from the cell wall. This is known as plasmolysis and the size of the vacuole also becomes smaller. Now, what I want you to understand is, look at where I'm putting the arrow right here, those empty white spots. What will exist at those empty white spots then, right? Now, a lot of my students will say, well, it might just be airspace or it might be vacuum. No, it's not, because the cell wall is freely permeable. So the external solution can just move through the cell wall and just occupy that empty space. That is what I want you to understand. So the external solution kind of diffuses through the cell wall and occupies the empty space within the cell wall. That is very important to know as well. Now, a bit of extra information. In plant cells, there is a definition that you must know called the protoplast. The protoplast is just basically every part of the plant cell minus the cell wall, the living component of the cell. You can see my plant cell here, a typical plant cell, but let me just remove the cell wall out. 
when I remove the cell wall, what you see there is the protoplasm, made up of the nucleus, cell surface membrane, vacuole, cytoplasm, and other important organelles within the cell. Now, the reason why I need to mention this is because when I go back to this diagram here, in the exam, you can say that when water rushes out of the cell, plasmolysis happens, and the protoplast is the one that shrinks. Please do not say that the plant cell shrinks. That is wrong because the plant cell is made up of cell wall and the protoplast, right? But the cell wall doesn't shrink. The cell wall still remains the same. It is the protoplast that actually shrinks. And in this case, we will describe the plant cell to be flaccid because the internal pressure within the cell is extremely low. And when the plant cell is turgid, it will provide support for the plant, especially herbaceous plants that do not have wood, and they are able to stand upright. But what happens is when the plant cell is flaccid due to the shrinking protoplast, it will cause the plant to wilt and the plant loses support. It cannot stand upright compared to the one on the left. That's what we have to know for osmosis in plant cells.